Amar Sohi, the mayor of Edmonton, just spoke at the grand opening of a World Financial Group office. World Financial Group is a multi-level marketing company that I've made several videos about totaling over a million views. In those videos, I show the research that I've done to highlight the similarities between WFG's business practices and those of an illegal pyramid scheme. WFG has been in trouble with regulators countless times for these practices, but before we get into that, here is the clip that was sent to me of my mayor, Amar Sohi, supporting WFG. Round of applause for that. Such a, such a big, big achievement, and we wish uh, them all the best. I look forward to uh, uh, to the uh, to the Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Frank and Amari Sohedin. Really appreciate. Uh, to say that seeing my mayor support an MLM company is disappointing would be the understatement of the decade. Multi-level marketing is a business model where 99% of annual participants lose more money than they earn. And just so you know, I'm not making that up. There is a document on the Federal Trade Commission's website that contains a list of MLM companies who have had their compensation plans studied as part of determining this 99% loss rate. And World Financial Group is mentioned by name on that list. This whole channel is dedicated to protecting and educating consumers about the dangers of MLM. A 99% loss rate, in my opinion, is not a business opportunity at all. It is a scam. And yet, here is my mayor celebrating Celebrating an MLM's expansion in his own city and calling it a big, big achievement. Worse than that is that WFG is notorious in Alberta for preying on the demographics of people that look just like you, Mayor Sohi. The comments on my WFG videos, as well as my personal DMs over the past four years, are filled with people from the South Asian community in Edmonton and Calgary telling me their personal stories of how WFG destroyed their relationships with their friends and relatives and cost them incalculable financial losses. In 2015, I watched my own best friend become absolutely brainwashed by the false promises fed to him by WFG. And after he tried to recruit me, he cut off our friendship because I told him I thought it was a pyramid scheme and I didn't want to join his downline. This is a story that has been echoed by literally thousands of people online. I've shown in my videos how MLMs target the most vulnerable people in society and how many times those vulnerable people are ethnic minorities who came to this country searching for their version of the American dream. Sort of like Amarjeet Sohi himself, who came to this country in the 80s and worked as a cab driver and eventually became the mayor. The irony of that same man now standing alongside people who would happily recruit a cab driver into an MLM that would squash any hopes they have of becoming something more is unbelievable. Recognize this guy standing behind the mayor? That's Jess Winder Dillon from my first video on WFG, the one who told me he was the CEO and lied to me about Hartage not being at the office. I'm in charge of this office. I'm the CEO here, okay? okay. Is, that not, is that not Hartage standing inside there? Yeah. Yep, it is. Okay. Is he really the CEO? No, of course not. CEO marketing director is just the name for one of the ranks that they have in WFG. And your rank, of course, correlates to how many people you have below you in your downline. They have marketing director, Director, senior marketing director, CEO marketing director. They're all just made up terms used to make themselves sound more legitimate. Or how about this guy? That's Raja Dhaliwal, who is the focus of my third video on WFG. In that video, Raja explains how success in WFG is based on recruiting, recruiting, and more recruiting. You just need to build four or five and you need to train them to build four or five each. And you just, just need to tap root them, get them a recruit, get them a recruit, get them a recruit. Mayor Sohi isn't the only Canadian politician that Raja has dug his claws into, though. Here's Ontario Premier Doug Ford shouting out Raja a few years ago in what looks like a hostage video. I want to take the opportunity to thank both Real Mashaud and Raja Dhaliwal and the amazing team at the World Financial Group who are stepping up in a big way to give back to the William Osler Hospital Foundation by donating $100,000. So I wrote to Mayor Sohi using the form on his website. I also called his office and left a voicemail reiterating what I said in the email. I told him who I was and included a link to my YouTube channel and urged him to rescind his support for WFG and apologize for aligning himself with an MLM company. Of course, I got no response. So as I am a concerned citizen speaking out about something that I believe is in the public interest, I am making this video to hold Mr. Sohi accountable and bring awareness to Edmontonians about what their mayor is doing. This is Emergy Sohi's official website and you can see the fundraising database. This is the full list of donors that contributed to his campaign and they're organized by obviously their names but also the amount that they donated. Among the people who donated between $3,000 and $5,000 is 
Jaswinder Dillon. If any of my more investigative subscribers care to go through this entire list to see who on this list actually is in WFG, I will include the link to this PDF in the description as well. In part four of my series on WFG that I released back in April, I showed that WFG was facing an enforcement action from the financial regulator in Ontario. Finally, something is being done, or so I thought. The results of that investigation finally came out, so let's take a look at it. The first bad sign here is the title, Tiered Recruitment Model MGAs. MGA stands for Managing General Agent, basically the insurance brokerage. Notice they don't call them multi-level marketing MGAs, which is what they are. Double speak is one of the key ways that cults control language. You see this a lot of times in politics. It's not torture, it's enhanced interrogation. Likewise, we're not a pyramid scheme, we're multi-level marketing. This title takes it a step further. We're not multi-level marketing, we're a tiered recruitment model MGA. The refusal of regulators to call these companies what they really are is an integral part of continuing the scam. But Marco, why would the government want to help these MLMs continue hurting people? Because the government stands to make millions of dollars protecting these MLM companies. And as we go through this report, I'll show you how they can do that. So they investigated 50 out of almost 1,200 Ontario agents in Great Way Financial, 50 out of more than 10,500 in World Financial Group, and they investigated 30 out of almost 1,000 in Experior Financial. They start off by saying, buying life and health insurance is one of the most important financial decisions a consumer may make. With many options available, most consumers rely on life and health insurance agents or life agents to assess their needs, provide advice, and to make sure they are buying the right product for their needs. The examinations found unacceptable levels of life agent non-compliance, specifically 50% of the life agents examined were found to have contravened the Insurance Act, AKA they broke the rules. We also observed other concerning practices that could lead to poor consumer outcomes, including all of these. As a result of this, FSRA took enforcement action against 65 life agents. Moving on to the next page, we find this paragraph that says the FSRA identified four main areas of concern. One, life agents were compensated based not only on their own insurance sales, but also on insurance sales made by the people they recruit. This business model could have motivated the recruitment of individuals who are not yet licensed and resulted in sales by many newly licensed life agents. Back in April, when the FSRA announced that they were even looking into World Financial Group, they said that this type of tiered recruitment structure was not typical of non-MLM insurance companies. Well, of course it isn't. You know what it is typical of? An illegal pyramid scheme. Two, training of life agents lacked important substance, rigor, and reporting mechanisms to ensure they understood and were able to serve customers needs. Three, relatively complex products were sold by life agents without adequate oversight to ensure product suitability and fair treatment of customers. Four, insurers and MGAs performed minimal, formal, and proactive supervision of their life agents to ensure fair treatment of customers. Of the 50 WFG life agents selected for examination, 19 of them, or 38%, were issued a business practice letter, 16 or 32% of them were escalated to regulatory discipline officers, 12 of them or 24% were issued a notice to impose SAMP. What's SAMP? I had to go Google, what is SAMP? SAMP stands for Summary Administrative Monetary Penalty, AKA pay money. Two of them were closed with no concerns and one of them resulted in a voluntary license surrender with no conditions. So out of 50 people, 50 people who were not investigated prior to this investigation, only two of them were found to have been doing everything totally by the book, closed with no concerns. That means 96% of the 50 that they just so happened to investigate we're breaking rules. You cannot make this shit up. Let's look at this beautiful image here. Contraventions of the Life Insurance Act. WFG had the most out of all the three companies that they looked into. Surprise. Of the 31 WFG life agents cited, a total of 111 contraventions of the act were determined as follows. And then it lists all of the different rule-breaking instances. This is from only 31 people. 31 agents produced 111 contraventions of the act. This is a company Company that has tens of thousands of people in it. Pretty sure more than 100,000 actually the last time I looked. But that's 111 examples that they found. I have to assume that there was more. If they only found 111, how many were there really? This is a joke. It's a joke. And what's the number one contravention that these WFG agents did? 
disclosure, transparency, telling the truth. I've talked about this in my videos before. Deception is the lifeblood of multi-level marketing. If people truly knew what they were getting into, if they were truly told, hey, by the way, 99 point something percent of people who join this company, who join this business, end up losing money. Do you still wanna do it? They would say no, but it gets worse. Of the 39 WFG life agents identified with best practices issues, a total of 177 client files were reviewed and a total of 632 best practice issues were identified. Of the 119 life agents examined, 94 reported being a part-time life agent, 79%, and 24% reported no insurance sales for 2020 or 2021. So a quarter of all of these people that they looked into never even made a sale in two years. And the vast majority of them, 79%, are doing this part-time. Again, more evidence that contradicts the claims that I have seen countless times in WFG presentations where they tell you that, oh yeah, well, it is possible within one year that you could be making $100,000 and retire and drive a Lamborghini and financial freedom, blah, blah, blah. If this was such a great opportunity, surely you would see more full-time agents, right? In 2020, of the 46 WFG life agents who completed the questionnaire, a total of 496 policies were reported sold. 208 of them, or 42%, were universal life policies. Universal life insurance is a complex and specialized product that may not be suitable for many consumers. Examination outcomes indicate that inexperienced life agents are predominantly selling universal life policies. This supports my theory that I explained in WFG part four, where I said that I think WFG agents are wildly undereducated about universal life insurance policies, but because those ones are the most expensive and thus earn the most commission, they're pushed to sell those ones. And you add to that the fact that they're sharing their commission with people two, four, five, ten levels below them in this MLM chain where everybody gets a piece of the same sale. Well, now you can see why they would want to be selling the most expensive thing, even if they don't understand what it does. And the FSRA says they're concerned that the insurers and MGAs captured in this report may not have effective oversight processes in place to manage potential risks to the consumer. Of course not. How could they when the entire emphasis is recruit five people who recruit five people who recruit five people? They have WFG training manuals that I have that explain this entire system. And look at this. This is so significant. Of the 46 WFG life agents who completed the questionnaire, five of them, or 11%, reported a total of $51,812 in commission chargeback debt. So approximately $10,000 of debt each. That means when you sell an insurance policy and the customer cancels it before it has the opportunity to renew, you as the agent have to pay back that initial commission that you got. To me, this huge, huge chargeback number in World Financial Group is evidence of another theory I have, that agents in WFG are only making insurance sales to the people they recruit below them and not actually to people in an outside market, real consumers, real customers. They're recruiting people saying, this is an amazing opportunity, financial freedom, just buy this insurance policy. And then when you recruit five people, they'll buy an insurance policy from you. And that's how we keep it going. And then the new recruits don't end up staying the full 12 months. Why? Because they're not making money. Why weren't they making any money? Because the five who recruit five who recruit five endless chain recruiting scheme model is a mathematically impossible equation that would deplete the entire population of the earth within 13 cycles. So then you have this massive turnover rate, this churn rate of people who are in the company from one year to the next. It's almost an entire new crop of agents. And when that happens, those recruits who on month one bought an insurance policy because their upline told them to, now on month seven or eight or whatever, cancel the policy. And so what do you get? 11% out of 46 agents with $51,812 in chargeback debt. Imagine you join this seemingly legitimate financial services company where everyone wears a suit and talks about how their dreams came true and blah, blah, blah. And you have $51,812 in debt. <laughs> and this is just what those agents admitted to having. They were relying with this statistic on the truthfulness of the agents who were being investigated. People engaged in the deception admitted to having $51,000 in debt. So how bad was it for the other 41 people? How bad was their debt? Less? More? How much debt is too much debt for someone who claims to be an entrepreneur and a business owner who's actually part of an MLM company and doesn't own any part of it? And here's a key thing. This is just the chargeback debt. This doesn't include all the other debts you accrued like 
the cost of getting licensed, about $500 to get your insurance license and go through the courses and whatever. The cost of joining World Financial Group, gas, driving to and from the office, food, the opportunity cost of your time because you're not a salaried employee. You're not getting paid hourly. Events to conventions and things like that. Some cases you might have to travel to go to these hype up events, these hype rallies, so that you can get your mindset better and become a big boss babe, boss bro. Here's more evidence that they have no idea what they are doing. During the interview phase of the examination program, the subject life agents were asked, does anyone monitor or supervise your business activities slash sales as a life agent? Of the 46 WFG life agents interviewed, 25 said yes, 16 said no, four said don't know, and one said not applicable. So almost half of them said no or I don't know. That number should be zero. For something as important and delicate to a consumer as life insurance, nearly half of people saying no or I don't know is completely unacceptable. Conclusion, when life agents are being compensated for the sales of individuals they recruit, this creates the potential for less focus on suitable recruits and suitable sales, which creates the potential for consumer harm. Duh. FSRA expects MGAs that utilize a tiered recruitment model and the insurers that conduct business with such MGAs to have effective oversight systems in place to manage this risk, as well as any other potential risks to the consumer. Well, unless you expect WFG and Greatway and Experior to start spending a ridiculous amount of money on people who would be doing this oversight, don't count on it because the entire thing is based on recruit people who recruit people who recruit people. There's just physically not enough manpower available to ensure that everybody is following the rules. The fact that this report took almost six months from the time they announced it in April is such a joke. And the disciplinary actions they took are such a joke. They won't demonize the whole company and say, no, the whole thing is a scam. Obviously, these 50 people we investigated, they learned these deceptive practices from somewhere. It's a system that obviously starts from the very top and trickles down. No, they won't do that. They'll just deal with each person individually and okay, you'll pay some money, you'll get a letter. It's a joke. It's like imagine you took a single piece of garbage out of a massive junkyard and you did it so slowly that by the time you removed this piece of garbage for good, 10,000 new pieces of garbage had taken its place. In my opinion, that's what this is like. Just call it what it is. Say what it is, say the words. While I was making this video, the CRA, which is our version of the IRS, came out with this warning. This warning is called, watch out for tax schemes involving multi-level marketing businesses. The bigger picture here is that whether it's the FTC, the Competition Bureau, the IRS, the CRA, the FSRA, all of these government bodies explain in great detail across a myriad of documents over many, many years, how MLMs are bad, how they are harmful, how they are dangerous, and yet they won't do the one thing that we need them to do. Outlaw it, shut them down, make them illegal. The numbers do not lie. So between the political donations and the SAMPs imposed by the FSRA, we can see that there's a lot of money in it for the government to just continue fining these companies and allowing them to operate rather than trying to sue them for being pyramid schemes and shut them down. That would require a lot of time, research, and money. And they also run the risk of losing the case because these MLMs can afford the best lawyers that money can buy. So why even bother, right? Just keep the money coming in and pat yourself on the back for a job well done. Thanks, FSRA. Remember, if you tried to pay a police officer to let you off the hook for a speeding ticket, it would be bribery and you would be breaking the law. But when rich corporations or MLM companies pay off the people who make the laws, it's called lobbying and it's perfectly legal. You and I are not part of the club. You and I were not invited to play the game. And it's not just my mayor or my city or my country. I have a whole video on my channel that goes over the US presidents who have supported multi-level marketing. This corruption goes to the very top. In my opinion, the only thing that has more leverage over a crooked politician than the blood money of an MLM is the breath of the angry mob on the back of their neck threatening their hopes of re-election. So what's a regular person to do? Well, you can tweet at Emergy so he as easily as I can. You can make a report to the FTC or Competition Bureau as easily as I can. But most importantly, you can share this information with the people you care about so that MLMs have a harder time recruiting new people to begin with. If consumers would stop giving their money to MLMs in the first place, the MLMs wouldn't have any money to bribe politicians with. If you wanna support my ongoing fight against MLMs, I have a Patreon. You get access to all my new videos early. There's other cool perks in there you can get, like one-on-one -on -one video calls with me, etc. The link to that is in the description. Thank you for watching, and please don't join an MLM.